All right, so this is the last video of 2020, and uh, I want to answer that question uh, that so many of you have asked, and that's, Alex, how much did you spend on this thing? Actually, I didn't want to know the answer to it, but, you know, it was kind of interesting to go through that huge hole list. So I'm going to answer that. Uh, I'm going to go through a little bit of, uh, you know, optimization and what I've been up to. I have been making progress as best as I can, but first, a little bit of a heads up. Uh, you know, I had to exert a little bit of physical effort today. We had a bit of an emergency with uh, the heating system here in the house. And uh, uh, to make a long story short, I hurt my shoulder and <laughs> daddy's on some drugs. So if things get a little bit weird, Pat Turner, then you know why. That's great. So let's uh, start and look at you know what I've been up to. One of the things I've noticed with this thing, it's irritating. It's just, it's, I'm sure those of you who have shoulder surgery can relate, but it's it's not so much the pain because it's not that bad, but it prevents you from doing the simplest things like you know cranking the wheels on the mill or on the cross slide lathe or whatever. It's it, it's like you could do it for like a couple minutes and then all of a sudden you're like yeah I can't do this anymore. So I had to find other ways. And towards that end, you know, I picked up a, a, a CNC router engraver type of thing. Uh, in fact, uh, that's what this is here. Uh, I needed a way, like there's no way, let's see if any of these would come out. Oh, one does. So uh, there's no way that I would be able to mill out all of these squares in this uh, plastic. These are the insulation. Uh, this is the insulation block and the mount block for these bus bars, which will go in here and they will be like, this but it's the orientation is going to be a little bit different it's going to make more sense since now the ESC is no longer in the uh, center console anyway so I needed a way to do that and there was no way I was going to be able to do it on the mill so that's why I decided to pick up this uh, Chinese CNC machine uh, <laughs> it's going to be uh, one of my uh, Chinese crap review videos is all I'm going to say because it definitely falls in that quality it's not like you know say these TP power motors or the Z batteries or any of that stuff that's all good stuff so there's good and then there's bad and that is bad uh, in fact the thing lasted all of 20 hours before the spindle died and that involved about six hours of troubleshooting and figuring things I'll cover all that in that video let's move on here Ross Converse uh, so here we have the two motors uh, one of the things that you guys might recall if you've been following along is I did buy a uh, um, a water cooling jacket, which I decided I wasn't going to use. Well, I did some math and I decided I am going to use it. Jose Gebauer or Gebauer, I'm not sure, but hi, Jose. Uh, anyway, uh, so we are going to use it because as it turns out, if I could get the motor temperature down from 115 degrees Fahrenheit down to even 65 degrees Fahrenheit, this motor's internal resistance should go down by 30%. That's a 30% increase potentially in power consumption and therefore power output. That's huge. It's, it's like, you know, when you see superconductor demonstrations, they're always super cooling the superconductor. Same kind of concept here. So that's why this looks thicker. In fact, it makes this motor look shorter, even though in reality, if you line it up, this motor is actually bigger. Uh, but you know, it's just in that silicone cooling jacket thing that I cut now. I'll go through that another time. Anyway, so I have been making progress. Like I say, I've been doing what I can. Uh, but you know, I've been scrolling at some point now. You've been seeing these uh, uh, prices scroll. These are the parts. Th this is what it's cost so far. Uh, the forget making a parts list. That's not going to happen. Um, but you know, pay attention to that and check it out, Zach Eason, um, and uh, you know, see what you think. If this is something you're interested in doing, although I do not recommend trying to replicate this because it is highly dangerous, and you know, you could get seriously hurt. Um, I could get seriously hurt. I might still get seriously hurt, Matt Gibson. I might. It could happen. <sighs> Went a little off the rails there. That's great. All right, let's let's uh, back this up a little bit. So basically, again, um, you know, with all these things, and I separated it by uh, you know things I bought from eBay, things I bought from Amazon, things I bought directly from certain vendors. And by the way, this price tag does not include the source blower. That's that's a, you know my situation is a little bit special. That was uh, given to me for this project, uh, but um, you know, is a gift from a friend basically. You know, all this other stuff, well, you know, it was paid for. So, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why Wesley Deer, I think it's just 
so awesome that you guys are watching this you're following along and uh you know donald pearson and every other name i've thrown fooled you guys every other name i've thrown in there has been uh one of my uh patrons on patreon so uh you know thank you guys really it's it's it means a lot that you're that interested in seeing the results and i feel like you know, I owe it to you guys to, to deliver. So towards that end, as we know, you know, 2021's coming up and what happens in spring around here on the east coast of the United States, it's track season and that's a good time to go fast is in the spring and in the fall, but in the spring, I seem to always run my fastest. So we're gonna try to find a track that's open and we're gonna hit one and we're gonna do it. <laughs> You've seen the price list. The total, the bottom line for everything is $3,340.74. That does not include all the tooling, the dyno time. Um, uh, like I said, it doesn't include the blower itself. It doesn't include the upgrades I needed to do to the car, uh, which in this case, you know, I really didn't need to do anything, but I wanted to. So, you know, whatever. It is what it is. So you're looking at, you know, almost 3500 bucks just to get two pounds of boost on a 500 horsepower motor. I think we're gonna ultimately end up with a lot more than that. You know, we saw rear wheel gains of what, 64 horsepower if memory serves correctly. Uh, you know, I think that in order for this to really be considered successful, we need to see triple digit gains, uh, you know, 100, 150 horsepower, uh, maybe 200 would be great. I wouldn't say no to more than that, obviously, but I think the realistic limit may be somewhere in the two to 250 horsepower range at the flywheel. Uh, so, you know, subtract the drive chain losses for what we'll see at the rear wheels. Feel free to, uh, you know, throw in a buck or two. Some of the, the patrons that I mentioned, you know, they were one time, you know, here's a couple of bucks, dude, you know, go have fun. I enjoy this. Um, you know, some people are, are on a monthly basis, but hey, you know, I appreciate it. I understand if you're not in a position to, to do anything or, you know, this doesn't quite, you know, float your boat enough to contribute, but you're still interested in watching the videos. Hey, you know, it's, it's everybody's got their own, right? So, yeah, I just appreciate that you're here. By the way, this thing is not a random socket. This is the hex drive and this is a DeWalt impact socket. And this was just a slug of steel that we welded together, turned and did all kinds of stuff and found it to be loose on the shaft. And I think I know why. It's because uh, those set screws that were in here took a massive beating. And uh, that was when I was still having trouble getting this thing to sync up before I realized the ESC had to be next to the motor and could not be in the console uh, of the car inside. The cable runs were just too long. Uh, I think that's when the damage happened. At least that's what I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna assume that. And uh, we'll see how that uh, turns out. So yeah, there you go. So basically this is where we're at. You know, we're uh, you know, closing in every day. Like I said, I hope everything comes together nicely and you know, we're driving that thing definitely within the next few weeks. Um, you know, if I'm really fortunate, I can maybe make that happen quicker. Uh, and then, you know, maybe another dyno trip and then the racetrack, baby. So that's it. So I'm gonna leave you with one last thing. This is the last time I had to do this for, you know, some medicinal reason. That's great. Well, I discovered something. I took a picture outside of a skyline and I discovered Alex's Rorschach test. So what I'm gonna show you is uh, a series of images. Each image is gonna be up 10 seconds. Uh, tell me what you see. Shout at the screen, it's okay. I shout at screens all the time. Uh, sometimes they shout back too. That's especially when they're off. I don't know what that means. <laughs> But, you know, definitely uh, enjoy this. It's a fun little game. I'll put each one up for, I don't know, 10 seconds. And, you know, if you like it, maybe I'll throw up some more because why they're easy and weird and fun, just like this thing is really, if you think about it. So uh, there you go. Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Uh, special thanks to the patrons. And uh, yeah, everybody be well and let's all have a much better 2021. Subscribe.